Alrighty, alrighty. So, uh, this is the uh, weekly book club. We are in 2.6 going over building healthy meal plans for optimal health, health how to make uh, healthy eating automatic. And this is a great one talking about a lot of cooking and things of that nature. Uh, so who would like to share some of their takeaways from this chapter? I think that was the first thing that kind of stood out for me was just right from the beginning about heat breaking down and destroying some of the vitamins and vegetables and kind of just talking about what vegetables benefit from being cooked and which don't. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just super interesting. Even the microwaving, I have that underlined because you always hear so many bad things about microwaving for whatever reason. Um, and it was actually good to microwave things because of it being short. And so I thought of like my air fryer too. And I'm thinking that's probably something similar because air fryers are quicker, you know, just like the hot heat, but quick. So it's not like they're getting overcooked. Um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. It made me kind of rethink, you know, ways that are typical for us to cook things and maybe just rethinking doing it differently. Absolutely. No doubt. In fact, Cindy and I were, she, she, Cindy was reading this chapter last night and she's like, oh, grilling, grilling's amazing. I'm like, keep reading because there's more to it. <laughs> oh uh, no, but it's still amazing. It still made me happy because is. grilling is amazing as long as it's not fatty meats. So you yes. can do your fish, you can do your lean meats, all kinds of stuff, but just no like greasy burgers or fatty steaks. <laughs> yes. Right, when it starts talking about cancer and disease in the same breath of grilling, that's, that's all I'm ever gonna remember now. Mm. Yeah, even just using it for veggies, like I, I liked that too, Cindy, because I know like in the previous chapter we had mm -hmm. heard that it, like the charring wasn't good on like the fatty meats and stuff. That was the like chemicals types of things that weren't good for us, but like, like but i love to grill and i know you guys love to grill i'm like come on so i needed that <laughs> yeah ditto. i know i want more info on that i want to know like is charcoal versus gas or you know what like true obviously electrical grills are probably a good option because uh i didn't know that about a lot of the stuff that happens there but i guess if you don't grill too long like the more rare or, or or like you said veggies and stuff is fine so i don't know i'd love to find out what's kind of the best of the grilling options this was an interesting chapter for me because this was the chapter that really introduced other food options over fuelings and like so dark I, chocolate Let's just okay right yeah <laughs> <laughs> four pieces, four pieces are okay. <laughs> um, but it gave, this is like, actually, it's the chapter that I often refer clients to if they run out of fuelings or um, mm -hmm. if they, for whatever reason, can no longer afford the program, then really they can still lose weight in a healthy way if they follow this chapter and this meal plan. Even the example one he gave, he does say that it doesn't put them into fat burn, and to avoid fruits during the weight loss phase, but it is a really useful tool for clients. Um, like I said, you can't afford it. I really liked this chapter just because I've gotten into such a routine of using a lot of the same foods and recipes. And I saw the lists and I thought, you know, I really need to expand and rethink and kind of freshen up my pantry. So it doesn't get stale and boring. It's an expansive list. Totally. I love that. I always make sure that I have my clients read this. Well, I always make sure that I have, that I give my clients the knowledge to read this or this um, chapter before they transition to make sure that they're understanding like what some of their options are um, and just kind of understanding that, well, 2.4 to 2.8, but 2.6 is such a good one with that, Cindy. I in the same, just to make sure that they're really understanding like the plate mm -hmm. system and the, you know, what a day could look like. Um, and then a list of those things. And I feel like so many of us, myself included, are just like you, I think Teresa, that was you that was saying that you get stuck 
kind of in the same thing and the same way. And so it's helpful to go and be like, maybe today I'll try to have a half cup of cottage cheese and a half of a medium tomato. That sounds like a great idea. So I'm, I like that, that list as well. It really breaks it down for us. That's so smart because you know those days where you'll, I mean, I feel this. I have felt this on the five and one, but other clients do too, where they're just like, they just need to change things up. And so to be able to direct them to this and be like, well, listen, like you can, you know, instead of a fueling, have one of these things um, just to kind of change it up the monotony of, you know, having those same things every day and, and alleviating any like taste fatigue and getting them to like just replace with some other healthy ideas. And I thought that this was also really great for those people that you might have on program that have lots of allergies. Cause again, I've dealt with people that have had a lot of allergies and just to be able to kind of have this place for them to reference when maybe they don't have as many fueling options they can have if there's a soy allergy or something like that. Right. Sure. Well, it opens up a way to help so many people that, you know, maybe don't want to eat so many fuelings that want to be, you know, also aren't like a three and three. They aren't wanting that high of a, a caloric intake, for example, right? That are still really wanting to lose that weight, want to incorporate other things. Being able to explain to them that like they aren't going to go into a fat burning state utilizing these things, but we can still help them reach their health goals. Which is amazing. I'm not the cook in this family at all. And so when it talks about all the different ways, I'm like, this is very educational for me. So if Cindy and did never not cooked or whatever, something happened where I had to cook, this would definitely give me some insight. Um, and, and then to Ashley's point that she was talking about earlier about how it breaks down all the different ways, like broiling, where it's really, it's cool for me, but you know, don't do it for your veggies because it was saying the, it decreases the enzyme and, and causes nutrient loss or um, boil, was it, was it, it was steaming. Um, and it gets kind of gets all into how that for certain types of foods can inhibit the growth of cancer cells. Like no one ever talks about this kind of stuff. And it's, I'm glad Dr. A points specific things out because it, you know, sure throwing words about, you know, like, disease and cancer around, I'm more apt to do that type of, or want that type of cooking versus the, another type um, that's better for you. Um, definitely enjoy that part of it. Dr. A also said, don't stand in front of your microwave waiting on your mac and cheese, which I'm, a, I'm usually like waiting on my mac and cheese. And now he's like, you're gonna get cataracts. I did, I've never heard this. I got to follow up with a study. So don't stare into your microwave while you're using it apparently. <laughs> Also, I used to do that as a kid, but I don't do that anymore. <laughs> right? I do. When my mac and cheese is in there, I'm like, mm, 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 mm. but <laughs> Make sure um, it doesn't blow up. <laughs> actually, though, I had a question. Who knows what the heck is a portable cooker that he's talking about? I don't know what that is exactly. <laughs> Especially because he was saying, like, I bring it with me. I was like, I would never bring my air fryer with me anywhere. It's portable ish, but. <laughs> Well, I, think um, there, I, I don't know exactly. Sorry, Ashley, go ahead. No, you're good. I was just, what popped into my head was like our little waffle makers, for example. Like I've, I've brought that with me before. If you, yeah. go Eric, if you Google portable, I just did this portable cooker, it comes up with like a little camping grill, like a hot plate type thing. Are Maybe you, like a George Foreman type grill. Are you looking at you know, those are small portable cooler or cooker? Okay. Portable cooker. He talks about nonstick mm -hmm. surfaces and having like two to four portion. And I was, I was like, well, what is, what is he talking about? Is that like a, right like a slow cooker that's got separate compartments? I don't know what exactly he was referring to. I think it's probably like yeah, a George a Foreman. Foreman. Grill. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I said it. Yeah. That's probably Somebody else said it. Don't give me the yeah, credit. We, we, have, we have one that we bring with us when we travel. Nice. Smart. Yeah, that used to be our go-to when we lived in Tacoma for a long time. 
All I could think of was like the uh, the thing you see that has the coffee maker, the griddle, and the toaster oven all like in one. <laughs> now That's next that dog warmer. Out. I have no idea what that is. You need to put that out there. What? You got to see that. It's amazing. Is that your new contraption, Eric, to replace the four slice toaster? No, I just bought an air fryer slash toaster oven slash broiler convection oven baker. Uh, and it's like the size of a dishwasher. So I don't know. It's ah! on my counter. <laughs> you can make a rotisserie chicken in that thing. You can probably put a turkey in it for real. Does it, does it make yeah. coffee? That's not what I want to know. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> then not. I don't need it. But the, but the one I was making fun of is, uh, and I've never had one, but it's like literally a toaster oven with kind of a coffee maker built into it. And then on the top surface is a griddle. So you can be doing like eggs and bacon, toast, uh, coffee. Of course, none of these would be low glycemic other than the coffee, but you know. <laughs> and I have a question about the going back to boiling. Um, Andrew, you had um, talked about uh, the, the boiling. You know, is there any, I'm kind of curious, I don't know the answer to this, so I really do want to know, is there any evidence um, that drinking the water after boiling, since you, most of the water, uh, I mean, uh, absorbs, you know, the nutrients and they wash away in the water, is there any evidence that drinking the water can restore that for us? Or I did what? not, um, I have not read anything that supports that, but I also know that when I look at the whatever's left of the pot, that never looks desirable to drink. <laughs> just, saying, just saying. It could be worth like saving for a soup broth or something. Who knows? But like, I have read that it's really good to save it and water your plants with it. Oh. oh. So if there's nutritional value to the plants, there's probably nutritional Maybe. value. Maybe. Sure. Oh, you shouldn't have told me, Ashley. Now I'm going to have like bottles of like jars of mm, vegetable uh, water around my house. <laughs> I'm curious enough to Google it, though. I'll have to look into that. Like I just have to work in my mouth a little. In like a smoothie. <laughs> plants eating. Cindy's gonna, I know. Cindy's gonna start boiling vegetables just to feed her plants. <laughs> right? Oh, <no. laughs> my wife has a problem. Or Andrew. Which is actually a dystopian movie for the vegetables. Mm. Yeah. The, and, uh, I, hey, I found a Presto Bento electric cook steamer with two compartments. Maybe that's what it is. It looks like a tiny little... Uh, slow cooker but it has multiple compartments and you could do different things all at once non-stick i don't know i think i need a new appliance on my counter <laughs> it's all you uh one of the things that i do see a uh, doctor as you're reading through all the chapters which he was recurring things right like he had just talked about in 2.5 or 2.4 about the you know, the four, basically the four food groups. And then someone mentioned earlier about the nine inch plate. It's a, it's a reoccurring theme. And then he even talks, he breaks it down again um, on page 276, you know, what your day should look like for a 1200 calorie day uh, with examples. I like that he keeps bringing it back up, reemphasizing it. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know Even he in a thought oh, habit almost, right? Yeah. I know he wrote this book, um, probably even without like Optavia in mind. Like, this is just for the everyday person that's not on program. This is, this will help you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love that. And then someone else mentioned the uh, very extensive. Which, if you guys are legacy clients or coaches, you guys know in the old book that we had, which wasn't as not even close to as good as this one. Uh, he had a list as well. I don't know if it's verbatim but um, um uh, they had a big list of 100 calorie options um, to go from which we had talked about one okay, thing that was kind um, of go ahead no go for it Anna. oh i was just um flipping through in the on page 282 you know the don't skip breakfast is one of the key successful weight maintenance weight key successful how does he make keys to successful weight maintenance? That eighty percent of people who've maintained a thirty-five pound or greater weight loss make breakfast a part of their every day. And I think this is such a a good statistic for me to remember and to share with clients. Like I know Cindy, you and I, neither of us were breakfast eaters. I still am not a breakfast eater. Like if it wasn't for our fuelings and my coffee, I would not have that habit. 
um, and I've been maintaining for, you know, a couple of years and I still do that. So just that reminder of, you know, needing those tools or having those tools is such a, a blessing. Um, and what a huge part of our success it is continued like 80%. That's huge. I don't want to be part of the 20%, you know, simply because I don't continue that one habit. But even after two years, it's like a thought, you know, it's like, I just don't like to eat in the morning. And I think there's a lot of us out there. It's a big, a big number. Hmm. It's easy to forget why we have some of the habits that we have along the way. You used to start doing it, rereading the book, as Andrew mentioned, the previous edition book. That's what I read. I've had this newer version for a while and reading it, it's reminded me, oh yeah, that's why we're doing it. And just it's mm -hmm. great reinforcement to keep that going. Yeah. There, there's a method, there's a purpose to the method that we're using and reminding myself all those little habit builders and why we do it. It's great. I just don't think it ever stops, you know, like, continuing these groups and continuing going back and reading things like how important it is to have that reminder of like gosh that's right that was one of the terrible habits that I had I need to be mindful to continue that like that's a it's so important I love that you've read the other book and you're here now with us doing this one it's so fun that breakfast thing Anna brought just mind to me is like how far away I've let my day out of control in some sense. Like we know mm -hmm. that we have these, these important things. I mean, you're supposed to have breakfast. It's always been the most important day, meal of your day. Right. I mean, I remember that from grade school, have breakfast mm -hmm. now, whether it be a bowl of cereal or <laughs> the cons what it, the content of it, was you know probably more to be desired but I think realizing how much I mean my guilty part of it was like I'm tired I'm waking up 10 minutes before I have to throw on clothes to get ready to go to go to work I don't have time for breakfast right mm -hmm. and so I think now we're taking that focus and realizing why it's so important for us to give our bodies the nutrients we need every two to three hours. And so I, I like, I'm like you, I wasn't a breakfast eater. I do the coffee and the shake and, and, the, and the hot cocoa in the morning because I still probably don't allow myself enough time to get ready for work. But even still, I know that I'm feeling myself and I like that he's calling out this checklist of change, like the things that we have. And it's, it's really a lot, um, or it's, I guess, highlighting more about, you know, as we've progressed and speaking for me, like how much I've really changed with this, with being on program the last two years, like I didn't have barely any of these habits in place and now I do. So it's really kind of cool. Yeah. It is cool. Just that reflecting on ourselves, right? Like these are things to celebrate and we, mm -hmm. we forget about these as victories. Yep. Yeah, I like this. And um, did anybody else go yum about the uh, pumpkin yogurt? I'm looking at these going yeah. to maybe make some of these. I knew <laughs> you. one of you was going to love the sound of that where I was the exact opposite, but I didn't want to make fun of it. But I was like, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Are you stereotyping us white girls in our pumpkin? I have no Eric, idea. I have no idea. Yes. So are boiled peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. Don't go oh there. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. So the one thing that. I, if when you I was, grill them, you got to. Uh, you got to grill it. them. <laughs> um, I believe when you I didn't like those, Cindy. I, I told I have to get them from Bubba on the side of like Highway 66 or something. I don't know. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, when you scoop them out of a warm crock pot, then they're really good. Uh, one of these days. When we go visit Eric, he's going to make us some. He promised. Okay. <laughs> Ashley's um, choking. I think she's uh, having an uh, allergic reaction. <laughs> uh, no, uh, Ashley uh, is, uh, Bean is actually in Florida as well. So that's why she resonates so much that with you, Eric. It's because. <laughs> well, I'm every 
every gas station in Tennessee has them. Yes. And they yes. gross me out. Yeah. Well, no. I you, was shocked you, to hear that someone did not know what boiled peanuts even were. I mean, right? I, I just could not imagine somebody. I mean, she, Cindy really didn't know have any idea what I was talking about when I it's asked her. Country over there, it's like I don't even know what you guys are doing. So I, I, mean, I put me in that in that pod. I have no idea what boiled peanuts are either. They're exactly oh. that. Well, They're boiled peanuts. Let's just say this, Ashley. We, if you you wanted to have New York style pizza, you wouldn't get it at the Seven Eleven. Also, the same is true, true with your boiled peanuts. Hey, I didn't say I went and got any. I just said they're there. <laughs> they're very, yeah, they're unique texture. They're very salty. That's why. But when I was reading this chapter, the one thing that it was that sample menu plan. Did you guys notice the column all the way to the right where he gave visuals of love servings? It. I do love it. But did you notice the protein size? Yes, I actually noticed that in the previous chapter where he was talking about the protein size. And I'm like, yeah, that's not the size of the protein. Right. Where? Out. It's the sample menu plan, the 1200 calorie menu plan that he provides in that chapter. Okay. The so very last column. I think. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm like. There's no way six ounces of chicken breast <laughs> looks like that. I mean. Right. And so I think of like, we often talk to people that we know when they start, they don't have scales or sometimes they still don't see the importance of scales months on. And I'm thinking, oh, they're shorting themselves protein. And in fact, I had somebody just this week who's on day five today who doesn't have a scale and um, I'm not quite sure she's interested in picking one up. And she's like, well, she's like, I'm kind of going off of a, you know, a, a visual deck of cards. And I'm like, oh, but you're eating chicken breast and you need like two of those. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, I guess it's a little different because that's, that's like a non-fueling, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Cause you're right. A f well, he, they say five ounce turkey breast, whereas on five and one, that would be, I believe a seven ounce but a deck of cards is a okay. little small anyway. I'm wondering know. if he's referencing red meat, because if you do red meat, then that's mm. more proportionate towards a deck of cards. Mm. Mm. The other thing is on, on this lower one plan, grilled salmon deck of cards. Yeah. Grilled exactly. salmon's a real fatty meat though. Grilled salmon's a five ouncer. So that would be I'm wondering if he's like categorizing just in the five ounce portion because that's where most people are. You know, they're doing the red meats and the salmon. So they're not going more. I don't know. I'm theorizing, but. Well, in these examples, there's, too. There's, there's, there's also a lot of yogurts in there. So it's like the whole day might have enough protein because they've got three ounces of yogurt in there a couple that's of times. True. So that's protein also. Mm, what page are you point. guys seeing that on? Page 276. 276. And it could just be more general to have that five ounce kind of idea in mind. And then if you are having, if you're supposed to be having six ounces or eight ounces or whatever, then you're having a deck of a cards and a half of a deck of cards. You know, it's just that visual to be general for maybe that yeah. amount. Well, mm -hmm. So it's funny well, that, that all this, not, that this is for a 1200 calorie diet. This isn't for five and one. Eight, five, right. Eight, right. 800 to a thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. And, he, and well, it's, it's good so, to know. I'm, it's like I'm a sorry, four go ahead. Two, right? Like that's what he's kind of looking at. Yeah. A three, even. This is mm -hmm. more of a three and three. Oh, so so mm -hmm. he's got the deck of cards size protein three times during this sample and also has yogurt two times. So there's plenty yeah, of protein in there, but it's like spread out a little more. That's probably what it is. I think and you're that's probably totally right. right. And that's good mm -hmm. to know because when I get in, you know, if we're used to seeing this five, six, seven ounce protein on our five and a one, right. I think what, what he's getting at here is like, that is more protein than you would have when you're eating normally, when you're having three meals a day, a smaller piece, uh, you know, a five ounce salmon or a deck of card size protein. Yeah, that's going to be tough for me. Stuff, <laughs> where, like, when we're in maintenance, right? Like you're not like, okay, let's bust out the scale every time. But it, by then you're probably eyeballing it more, right? Where you need a little more calories anyways to maintain the weight, not lose, not gain. But um, so be, that's, you know, all the, all the size references is you're going to be eyeballing most of it. But 
you know, if you're sticking with a plate system, the deck of cards, the tennis ball, these sizes, you have a good idea of what you're getting, which is good because we can't be oh. walking around the rest of our lives with the scale in our pocket, right? Like we're gonna, exactly. We're gonna exactly. I was that. just going to say, I love how this helps you transition to that because I think, you know, well, Cindy and I were just talking about the other day, like, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to count everything for the rest of my life. Like that's what attracted me to this program is that it wasn't that like counting every point and counting every calorie and carbs and all these things forever. And so I love, 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 love the visual system that I can take anywhere, anytime, always when I'm putting my plates together that kind of releases that stress around, you know, healthy eating and like that diet feeling you know where you're like oh i'm on a diet so i have to count these numbers all the time it's like no i just need to put my plate together in a healthy way and so having a visual system to do that feels so free for me i yeah, really I enjoy it it's a great mm -hmm. reference if and you're it's out less at a about restaurant. yeah totally yeah and i think you know reminding ourselves that the the weighing of the protein and veggies is in on five and one the reason why it is so incredibly important is because we are at a restricted calorie count and wanting to make sure that we're staying in that fat burning state right so like that part is so 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 important but to your point andrew when we're eating more um throughout the day we're not in that fat burning state and we're not in the weight loss phase uh we aren't allowing ourselves to release a little bit of that tension around um you know sticking to the such a strong regiment of like i need exactly seven ounces i need exactly a cup and a half um those are really good habits to have and knowledge to have as you know sometimes you know that's what we want to revisit let's say like after a vacation for example right like generally speaking when we eat out a lot they just cook differently than we do so it's not abnormal to be retaining so it's nice to revisit those initial habits that really kind of get us back in check but then to have more of that um kind of free flowed but controlled feeling um is I, I think it's a great visual to kind of release some of that stress agreed i think it's just good for being mindful having that visual like you guys said about going going to dinner and knowing like, okay, I only need like half of that piece of meat. I'm taking the rest of this home, you know, mm -hmm. that big old steak that they plopped on my plate. I'm cutting that in half. Um, yeah. I also I love that they have all those resources on habits of health. Like the book like brought us back to that and just saying like, we have sample meal plans. We have all of this. I'm like, so I'm over there looking at habits of health, like, wow, like there's these two week meal plans that we can lead people to and direct them to mm -hmm. and all these other awesome resources um, that I'll be using too. But it's just, there's so much there for us that you just sometimes don't even realize. Yeah. I, um, I think of things, this has been really strong in my world lately of passing these habits down to my kids, especially my youngest daughter is so aware of, me and what I do like if you ask her what she wants to be when she grows up she'll say I want to be an Optavia coach she's six oh, I love it seriously and the best part is that she says and something else so like she has that mindset already that like she wants to do this and other things which That's I love entrepreneur. but I'm so stoked that I'm passing those things down to her but what I don't want to pass down to her is things like I obsessively weigh my food and I'm constantly counting things, right? Like I don't want her to have those habits. I just want her to have this freedom of making healthy choices. Like, Oh, I really want to have that granola bar. That's, you know, or I want to have a bagel. Bagels are great. I should have a protein with my bagel, right? Like it's, it's not this like, well, how many grams am I having? Am I having <laughs> two ounces of a bagel, you know? And it made, it was really clear to me the other day she came in my closet and she had weighed herself like a couple days before, which cool. That's fun to see like how strong are you getting is what we always talk about. Like how much muscle do you think you're building at gymnastics? But then she came in again the next day and was like, I'm going to weigh myself. And I was like, you don't need your weigh yourself. You just weighed yourself yesterday. And she said, 
but you weigh yourself every day. Oh. I haven't weighed myself since. Like, <laughs> nope, I sure don't. Like, why? why I don't want to pass that down to her. And I had, I didn't, she's not even with me every day when I do it. You know what I mean? But she, kids are so smart and so observant and they want to be just like us. And so thinking about these pieces and these habits that I'm showing them is really inspiring for me to make choices in a different way so that they don't come, come up with these uh, stresses or complexes around any of it. So good. So I don't know. That really got my brain spinning about what I'm showing my kids, you know, even though weighing is not an unhealthy habit per se, the way in which we do it, you know, with our food even. Kids notice things that we don't realize they do. Even my grandson, Mm -hmm. it's when you mentioned that I've never weighed myself in front of my grandson, but he saw the scale in our bathroom and he pulled it out and he wanted to weigh himself. And I thought, huh, his mom must weigh herself pretty frequently because he knew what that was and how to stand on it when he pulled it out. And he's two years old. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Pretty pretty much. Well, I can totally relate to that, you know, um, for starting program. My whole family was on the path of healthy disease you know, or habits of disease, not healthy disease, but habits of disease. Um, You know, I mean, we used to joke around that my dog was overweight because he's a Beardsley. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't. uh, And then, you know, having my daughter being 216 pounds at 16 years old, I created that, you know, I did that. And so when you get that ripple effect of all of these changes, you know, Anna's daughter paying attention to her and that is the impact right there. That's what we're doing. You know, we're, we are changing our surroundings and making them healthy. So I think this whole entire thing is fantastic. And with the kids, even when, you know, what I try to keep in mind, because I'll sometimes get, you know, I really try to make sure they're making healthy choices. And sometimes I feel like I'm, I'm pressuring even too much on it. Like I don't, I want to be careful in how I present that, but you know what, as with everything, just like teaching them, please. And thank you. And all, and all the other things that we're trying to teach these kids, they don't always get it perfect, but they're going to remember those little lessons. So even if your kid is not making every time like a perfect healthy choice of what you'd you'd love to see. And I mean, big shocker that they're not, they're, they're not health coaches. We didn't do that, you know, during our childhood, but we're still teaching them those little things about reading the nutrition panel and understanding what you need and, and checking out like how many calories and how many carbs does this have? And is there other nutrition involved in here? And if it's not the best choice, how do we even it out? I mean, they may not get it right every time, but That's the stuff you're going to remember. I mean, whatever your parents told you was important, even if you didn't walk away with a perfect working knowledge of every detail, as you grow older, it's just a habit of thinking. And they're going to do the research and they're going to find out like, oh, well, I always remember it was important to my mom and dad that I got the right amount of protein or carbs or, you know, that we didn't fry foods. And and they're going to be curious about why that is. And and it's going to be a lot easier for them, I think, because we, we show them this stuff. So I'm with you, Anna. I love that the kids are making, uh, you know, a lot better choices than they used to, even when they're not perfect. <laughs> but, and, I, and I like what you said about the scale too. I like my kids to know that I, I want to keep track of my weight and my health progress. Like it's a scientific thing to me, but not every day. It's just like a trend. You know what? Like we keep an eye on our weight because we don't want to be unknowingly putting on weight or losing too much weight or whatever, but we could do that once a month or, you know, once a quarter, you know, whatever we want. Yeah. Erica. And then talking about just the way that it, it works for us, right? Like mm. instead of having like, Oh, I don't want to, no, no, thank you. I don't want to have that cake. I, I don't want to get fat, you right. know, or like talking about like, you know what? No, thank you. I don't want that cake. I don't want to get a stomach ache. Or exactly. I don't, I don't want my body to produce, or I don't want my body to release that dopamine. That's really hard for me to stop eating sugar once I start. Like acknowledging right. the other things that happen 
or even you know, just saying, you know what, I, I, I had a choice like that recently. I try not to eat those kind of things very often. And, you know, so I had, right. I had cake yesterday, so I, I'm probably not going to have cake today. Thank you. Like just, yeah. I mean, even cookie monster, that's what he's all about these days. It's like, this is a once in a while food, not necessarily a I never food. Monster monster does a while food. You don't guys don't know that Cookie Monster now promotes better habits. I, you should watch some yes, stuff. Yes, yes. All about moderation. Yeah. Cookie well, Monster no longer eats five thousand cookies. Use that when I was a kid. You know, he could have said something like that when we yeah. were growing up, right? That's why they changed it because Cookie Monster was like, "Give me all the cookies on, now." Now they Cookie learn. Monster says, "Andrew, hey. above the line, it's not Cookie Monster's fault." <laughs> oh, oh, but it is, <laughs> and it's my parents' fault. Uh, it, no. Uh, everything you're saying that's not something i you know it's and i always say this to folks that i talk with we don't know what we don't know and uh, and if we if i wouldn't have been in here in this book or in the life book i would not be aware of half the stuff that we're even talking about right now right like it just was so when i grew up and probably the way you guys maybe have grown up too is where mom and dad weren't talking about this and so I have an addiction to Oreos because we ate a lot of them and Ritz don't put those in the house because I'll eat them all. And nobody was talking about that. I mean, not even, I don't mean, nobody was like the government was talking about the, the, the pyramid and, and the, the, they weren't talking about um, food addiction and things like that with kids. It just wasn't, they're still probably not doing that. But, um, but yeah, to your point, Eric, um, just even reading this, and I think I'd read something about peanut butter in here and all the doctors talking about the stuff that they put in there. So that piqued my interest because my daughter's addicted to peanut butter. And so I brought in the healthy stuff and I talked to some of their our clients who are vegetarians. I'm like, what do you think of that? You know, all natural peanut butter is like, oh dude, it's amazing. I'm like you should get it. And so I, so, I, so I did. And I think it's amazing. It really is. Uh, and I, my daughter's like, why do you, why are you buying that now? I go, cause it doesn't have half the crap that yours does. And so, I mean, just making her aware of like, dude, do you know what's junk's in your peanut butter? You know, I think it tastes great. I don't know. I mean, the consistency is just peanuts, right? It's a little bit, a little bit different. It's not as, it's not jiffy by any means. You got to stir it, uh, get, you know, but um, anyways. Yeah. So I mean, I just, the, the awareness alone, uh, you can't make changes unless you're aware of something. You just can't, you know. If mm -hmm. we're the primary cook in the house and you start doing recipes and meals and your cooking program approved things, that's what the kids start to get and that's what they start to remember. Anybody in the household, you're starting yeah. to affect them in a ripple effect just because they're starting to eat the foods and meals you're making. And I, you know, I see you sending you and Andrew and your dinners and the meals and the recipes you post. That's what your kids are eating. So that's what they're learning. And it does have a longer rippling effect. Just Peggy, they may sit so at the table. Point. And like, th that's going to be their comfort food. Like you're, you're serving yes. your kids so well, you know, when, when, when my kids grow up and they're like, I'm having a rough day. I really need to make myself a chicken stir fry tonight. <laughs> <laughs> how cool is that? Right. Like, how cool is it that they're learning to eat from the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> Well, and how to navigate their own uh, emotions from the beginning, right? Like, I hear myself saying things to my kids when they're super upset where I'm like, your power is in your breath. Let's breathe in and let's breathe out. Let's go for a walk. Let's, let's move that energy throughout our body. Instead right. of like, oh, I'm so sorry. I had such a hard day. Let's stop for ice cream on the way home. Like, it's just such a different approach that like, they don't relate those things that's what I, you know, came up with, like, oh, your boyfriend broke up with you. Ugh, I'm so sorry. Let's go to Dairy Queen, baby. And you're like, nah, I can't wait to get broken up with again. I get Dairy Queen. <laughs> right? Let's go find a new jerk. But just teaching them to control too. their response, right? Like, how yeah. cool totally. is that tool? Totally. And to own that, like, they aren't going to be 35 years old figuring out how to take responsibility for the yeah, they might look at I what we I was talk use about. I naughty word, but we're recorded for the naughty <laughs> word in their life. For all the ones who are looking for the other recordings, Anna's the reason why we don't have them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Anna and Boyle Pina. And Eric. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. All please. Well, I was pretty yeah. adamant when I started program that I was not going to cook 
different meals for everybody. Mm-hmm. I, I, that was just, if I was going to do it, then everybody's doing it. And that's just the way we're doing it. And my, I co-parent my grandkids for the most part. Um, and I let them help me do all the weighing and the measuring so that they can see. Um, and, and they like it and it's fun. And now they have new meals that they request. They like crock pot pizza. They, mm. they, oh yeah, can we make crock pot pizza tonight? And I like that so much better than, Hey, can we go to Papa Murphy's and get a pizza? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it has made a huge difference with them. They do ask for new meals and new things that they like. And they want to try my feelings, um, which at oh, first yeah. I was very stingy with. And I was like, no, this is all I get. You're not, you're, I'm sorry. I love you, but no, you're not getting a bite right? of my chocolate cookie mint bar. No. <laughs> so my son loved a few things. And I actually, just as a FYI for, for some of you parents, and I don't know that this would apply to, to all kids. I mean, the fuelings are safe for kids. Like it's okay for them to have them, but the probiotic, Every time my son will eat a fueling, a lot of times he'll get a stomach ache because, you know, the probiotic is designed to be having five times a day and really getting settled and established in your gut. Whereas if you're only having a little bit here and there, it can actually upset some kids' stomachs. So I'm like, okay, I had to order. I ordered him some classics and I, I kind of keep them in the back of the pantry for when he just has to have, you know, one of my bars or something. But just a heads up on that. Some kids don't agree with the probiotic. I give my grandkids a pre a pre and a probiotic, so they have that every day. And oh, uh, well, if they're already established, it didn't take great. long though before they asked for a bite of this or that, and I gave them one. And they were like, mm, "No thanks, you oh. can have." That. <laughs> All three of my kids use fuelings daily. All awesome. Same. All my of them. Love yeah, them. mine do. Yeah. Yeah. My daughter just partakes of the puddings, and now we're out. So. Oh, wait. <laughs> Fire her. No, she loves them. She loves them. Carter, I need to get on those. Um, Lily has cookie dough, I think, every morning for breakfast. <laughs> Love it. Well, guys, um, we pretty much covered this uh, chapter pretty well. I don't know if anybody had anything else more I wanted to add. No? So next week or two weeks from now, we do this every two weeks because, uh, because Eric doesn't like to do it weekly. Just kidding, Eric. Um, uh, we're jumping into, uh, well, a lot of these chapters were huge. We just couldn't get it done, right? Andrew's so excited right now. I know. This is, I've been literally uh-huh. talking about 2.7 since about 2.0, right? Like <laughs> how fat burn happens. Like when I read this, that was like, why didn't anybody talk about this? Like, it doesn't even say it in the guide. Like, why don't they talk about this? So this is very interesting. And I'm very much looking forward to your thoughts on this next week or in two weeks, rather, when we start talking about this and how it all goes down, because I didn't understand it. I mean, we, we were taught it like, well, you know, you get into fat burn after three days and this and that, but this explains how, how it all works. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely interested in your thoughts when this uh when this happens in a couple of weeks so uh, i know you want a lot of engagement and stuff on that so uh just kind of throwing it out there that that's the day after thanksgiving so i'm not sure if you that's want to kind of change your schedule around you might get i mean i'll show up but no I, I don't black know. friday uh, well, mm-hmm. that's a problem yeah. i'll be here uh we'll probably be on a plane back uh, yes from wow. jersey uh so oh good Good call on that. Maybe, I don't know, it's, maybe we wait three weeks, with three weeks, give everybody plenty of time, um, or one week, I don't know. Do it next week in anticipation. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I oh, agree. that's a good idea, as we prep for the holidays. Push it out three, three weeks. weeks. Yeah. Let's do, yeah. Okay, I'm excited. Oh, now I know really that. Excited. <laughs> we're cooking all program approved Thanksgiving over here. So yep, doing it too. Yep. Love it. I love Yay. it. Doing it and doing it, and doing it well. Right. <laughs> Ashley, did you just say the same thing as me? I feel like we did. I was like, <laughs> was there an echo anybody? I feel like there was an echo. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of my head. Yeah. Okay. Did you guys both think- do the shack? Yeah. <laughs> doing it and doing it and doing it well. 
All hey, right. if someone's on a desktop, can you grab a, a screenshot of everybody and everybody smile and wave? I can do it. Cheese. Okay, wait, I can I can make myself available. Be available. Where's Cindy? I'm gonna freeze. I'm Not frozen. available. It's <laughs> <laughs> like not happening. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Well, I love all the folks that came on. I love that you're on here. Hope you guys are on next week, and hopefully we can get some more folks in here and get, get a whole even a bigger part yeah. going on. Uh, so, awesome, guys. Well, thank you guys so much for jumping on. We'll chat with you guys next week. Thank you so uh, much. Bye. 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 Bye.